Hello, I'm Peter Knight from the Fernand Gaudel Institute of World Economics in Brazil. I'm also the coordinator of the Sufficiency for Sustainability Network, a network of global thought leaders. Are there areas where basic income and issues such as environmental responsibility intersect? Can UBI be a force for environmental protection or does it further a consumption-based system? The basic premise of the Sufficiency for Sustainability Network is that economic sufficiency, that is, meeting the basic needs of the population, is a necessary condition for economic, social, political, and ecological sustainability. If basic needs are not met, it is very difficult to mobilize political support for other dimensions of sustainability, including restricting economic growth and consumption uh, to stay within planetary boundaries. UBI is the best public policy for meeting the basic needs of the world's population. What are some areas where UBI needs to be supplemented with other policies to address the coming challenges of the next decade? I would cite five key policies. Increased and more progressive taxation of income, consumption, and wealth to finance UBI. A mission of sovereign money to provide another partial finance for UBI. Policies to reduce the influence of wealthy citizens that, to purchase political power in order to further concentrate the income and wealth in their hands. Natural resource and carbon taxes in order to support ecological sustainability. And finally, incentives to apply exponential technologies to support sufficiency and sustainability. How long will it take for artificial intelligence and automation to affect employment significantly in Asia-Pacific economies? The answer varies depending on the fertility rates and aging of the population in different countries in the region. In advanced countries like Japan, the Republic of Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan with low fertility rates ranging from 1.1 to 1.4 live births per woman, there are <coughs> strong incentives to employ artificial intelligence, robotics, and automation. So it is likely that these technologies will advance rapidly over the coming decade. China and Thailand are intermediate cases. Then there are countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam, where fertility rates are still 2.0 or higher, and the population age 65 and above ranges from 4.8 to 7.1 percent of the population. These countries will still have plentiful labor forces over the next decade with less incentive to apply exponential technologies. Taiwan is facing the problem of becoming a super-aged society. Can basic income help alleviate this issue? Taiwan's population of 60 and above was 18.6% of the population in 2015, and the UN projects it to be 31.3% in 2030 and 44.3% in 2050, which would be the highest level of any country in the world in that year. The median age in Taiwan was 39.7 years in 2015, and is projected to rise to 48.1 years in 2030 and 56.2 years in the year 2050, which would again make the highest level of any country in the world. UBI, progressive taxation to finance it, and the use of advanced labor-saving technologies are the key policies for Taiwan to achieve economic, social, political, and ecological sustainability.